Greetings from the far side of the galaxy, I'm Fury, your host the most, here with another guide. The idea for today is simple, and it's a question I am quite frankly getting sick of seeing on the Tokyo After School subreddit all the goddamn time. How do I build a good team in Hasamo? Well, now you can finally know, now that I have descended from heaven to shed my wisdom on you plebeians. Let's get the first section of this video started with the basics. That may sound a little weird, so let me give you an example. In the center, you have your team slots, where you select your units, and at the top, you have your team select, where you select which team you want to use. I tend to use the team select for having one team to grind out events, another for grinding coins, alongside one team dedicated to quest I just want to win. The main thing that will decide how you build your teams outside of, well, what units you have, is this thing right here, your team cost. Every variety of unit from 1 star all the way up to 5 star have various costs to put them in your team. You can see the cost of the unit next to their star level on the team building screen. The primary way you usually make a better team is by usually using better units who usually have a higher cost. The best way to increase how much you can afford is by increasing your player rank, so you better get on that grind and start completing quests. Surprise tip incoming! In Envari's shop, there's Akashic records you can buy for those rainbow bits that increase how much rank XP you get. These are written in the here and now, in this place of education, and a peaceful day. The fourth one, Together Now We Walk, isn't actually in the Envari shop at the time of recording this, so do be sure to check the shop regularly to see if they have it. Like I said before, each rarity of unit has a different cost associated with it. 1 stars cost 2, 2 stars cost 4, 3 is 8, 4 is 16, and 5 is 24. However, there are exceptions to this rule. Premium units, i.e. those not pulled from regular banners, like stuff gotten from a shop or the New Year's specialty banner. For example, the premium unit of the current event, Reprobis, cost 18, despite being a 4-star who should cost 16. The same can be said of Gorozaimon, the premium unit from the Summer Pool Twilight event. The second kind of character that cost more are those pulled from the New Year's specialty banner, like Inaba, who's a 4-star that cost 18. The other, other kind of unit that doesn't match the usual cost are the protagonist specialty units. Both the protagonist units are far cheaper than they should be, with the 3 star costing 0 and the 4 star only costing 2. Whoop whoop, surprise tip incoming! Because the protagonist 3 star has 0 cost, one effective way to increase rank XP is to simply slap them on your team's unused slot and equip them with a written in the here and now AR card for that sweet, sweet 20% boost. The cost will add up quick as you fill in your slots with your units. You get 5 slots, with 3 active at the beginning and 2 in the back, excluding the support slot. Whenever those members in the first 3 slots die, those in the back will fill in. This can be used when tailoring a team for the main quest by essentially stacking the front with sacrificial pawns and keeping the good units in the back where they can avoid attacks. That way you can stretch out your teams just a bit further. Super D Duper Surprise Tip Incoming One of the best sacrificial pawns that can easily be obtained using one of those golden tickets is Cthulhu's 3 star. Not only will he keep some of your units safe in the back lines, but when he leaves he'll also deal damage to every enemy on the board. As for support units, those are units you can borrow from friends and randos before heading into quest. I recommend not relying on these too much because they can change, but if you're a new player you should abuse this system for all it's worth. There are many units who can essentially solo the early game content and carry you into mid game at least. Off the top of my head, some units that can are Normal Dagon, Nightglows Kurogane, Summer Oz, and Summer Heracles. The final thing I need to mention is the newest addition to the team building screen. That thing to the right, right here. This is the Guild Affiliation System. Point is, you can unlock certain Guild Affiliations, upgrade their bonuses, and then equip them to your teams. However, those buffs won't apply to your entire team, just the units who belong to that guild. In this example, I have this team equipped with the Summoner's Guild. 
That means that Tadatomo, Shiro, and the protagonist will get the bonus. However, Surtur and Kathuga will not get the bonus because they don't belong to the summoners. They belong to the genociders and berserkers respectively. Oh, and the thing you need to unlock and upgrade the affiliations can be bought in event shops and the Anvari shops. Now that you know where to build your team, let's get into the meat of this video, how to build your team. Please be sure to like and subscribe, donate to my Kofi and Patreon, and check out my live streams on Mondays and Fridays. Now, let's start the next section. The easiest way to build an effective team in Asamo is based around debuffs. I consider them to be Hasamo's bread and butter because most units will at least have something that they can give the enemy. Of course, not all debuffs are created equal, so quick top 10 just because we can. Number 5, Weapon Change, but depending on what they change the weapon into. This helps limit the spread of damage and keep in mind that different weapon types have different attack modifiers, meaning you can reduce damage by spreading it out across your team. Number 4, Charm. It prevents your enemies from attacking, which is generally pretty useful. Number 3. Skill Lock prevents the enemies from using skills, which means even their attacks become pretty ignorable. Number 2. Double Lock prevents the use of skills and charge attacks for good measure. Number 1. Possession makes your enemies turn around and start fighting each other. But all of these buffs are rare and tend to be the icing on the cake for their high impact on the field. The most common debuffs you'll come across are things like Dazzle, which reduces enemy attack, Burn, your average damage over time skill, and Fear, which prevents movement. While they don't have as much impact on the board as the top 5, their true strength can be brought out thanks to advantages. Advantages are what I call variations of the same type of skill that a lot of units have. They're all pretty much the same, doing extra damage against enemies with insert debuff or buff here. What's that? A bird! A plane! It's another surprise tip incoming! The Asamo Wiki is actually pretty good about buffs and debuffs. By searching up any debuff, you can be brought to a page that not only shows transients that give the debuff, but also shows who has advantages to it and is immune. They even let you know if it's for self, allies, enemies, or whether or not it's a part of their CS skill. Having a good advantage can make or break a unit. Hot Springs Horikyu Kamui is one of the best units in the game because he has a really good advantage. He not only has an advantage to burn and no buff, but spreads both of them as well. This means he doesn't need help enabling his strategy, freeing up your other slots to put in other units. The other main way I build teams is centered around particular units with singularly good effects. That may sound a little weird, so let me give you an example. Nyklo's Kurogane and his fantastic fourth skill. Removing up to 8,000 HP from enemies in a 3x3 area in front of him while pushing away and applying break. Keep in mind, 8,000 HP is usually more HP than most enemies have, but the move can't kill. So, how do you ensure that your enemies die for that clean 4 round 4 turn sweep? Well, you pair Kurogane up with people who can actually hit the units he can. This means building a team with wand or gun type weapons, that way you can cover all the squares and get that perfect screen wipe thanks to Kurogane. Then there's also units like Oz, although I admit for him it's less finding what works and more finding what few units don't work. Like I said, buffs and debuffs are the name of the game, and many of the best ones are on hit. As such, the game is balanced around who they can target. Leecho is so good because he has skill lock at wand type range. Masanori is balanced around having the best debuff, possession, but being limited with blow type range so he can only do it to one enemy. And Oz throws that right out the window by handing any ally infinite attack range so he can just no scope entire boards. And if you look to your left, you will see another surprise tip incoming. You can actually get Oz at the time of making this video because Life Hunters brought him back for this banner. The final way you can build a team is the method I have the least experience with, the new guild affiliation system. It gives buffs based on the upgrade level of the guild and how many members of the guild are on the team. They get an attack and defense up, an appearing CP bonus, and a skill rate up. So it's very possible to just ignore strategy and brute force your way if you upgrade your guild affiliation. Looky there, just over yonder. A surprise tip incoming. 
You know those one and two stars you get from the ally banner? Most of those are actually registered as summoners so they can help when filling out ranks for a guild bonus. And now we have our third section, Team Recommendations. For grinding coins, I suggest you have these three on your loadout. All of Invari's units from the three star to the limited have a bonus that boost coins dropped. The Lucky Coin Cat is a one star that can be obtained from the ally banner, so spend those points and hope you get lucky. If you're looking to abuse Summer Oz in a fun way, there's Masanori, but also Kersha, who has the highest charm proc in the game. Hot Springs Horkyu pairs really well with units that specialize in burn, so pairing him with either version of Tadatomo can do wonders. Surtur's 5 star is really good on those wide stages, but not for his attack. He applies a great set of buffs to anyone in line with him, so he's great for creating a solid, strong wall. Christmas Surong works really well as a healer since he spreads blessing and gives blessing strengthening which boosts defense. One of my go-to teams for dealing high damage quickly is Hot Springs Miniaki and Halloween Krampus. Miniaki spreads stigma and skill lock for funsies, and Krampus can deal immense damage against stigma. This is the end of the video, but before we go, let's do our Patreon shoutouts. For 3 stars, we have special thanks to 87 Werehog, Deku, Zara Chow, Choron, Garen Lefei, Dragon King Gara, Anon RC, Lightning Shadow, and Kayu. For 4 stars, we have Miki Moon and Miko stamping the yellow seal. And for our Super D Tuper special 5 star shoutouts, we have... First, Vanilla Flower, the Loyal Warrior Monk. Then, Poor Mage, the Master Magician. Followed by Hodari Lion at the March Hare's Tea Party. Next, Sky King 64, the Maestro of Life and Death. And finally, Mahogasaur, the King of the Coliseum. Thank you for watching. Do be sure to like and subscribe, donate to my Kofi and Patreon, and check out my live streams on Mondays and Fridays. As always, this is Joe's Fury signing out.